point that the martyr makes is you don't have to die for revolution. The point of a martyr is not to, to destroy yourself for revolution. No, it's to build yourself for revolution, to live for revolution. Anybody can romanticize death. Oh, I'm gonna strap myself with a bomb and blow up my enemies. I had, to, I had to challenge the principle of the martyr. The martyr, in the very beginning, when you listen to it, you're like, damn, at the end of the actual song, the martyr, he talks about, you know, I had a family and I, I lost all these things and now I'm fighting and I, I, I dream about this life I used to live almost like, almost like I wanted to, to stop where I was and go back to that time of peace. And then I realized I can't go back to that because that doesn't exist. And at the end of the entire mortar when he's supposed to die, he actually lives. And the point that the mortar makes is you don't have to die for revolution. The point of a mortar is not to, to destroy yourself for revolution. No, it's to build yourself for revolution, to live for revolution. Anybody can romanticize death. Oh, I'm gonna strap myself with a bomb and blow up my enemies. But that's easy compared to living the rest of your life, raising children to be members of society that aren't ignorant and aren't just partisan and aren't religious fanatics. It's harder to grow up every single day and wake up and work a working class job and organize people in your neighborhood against corrupt politicians, to divest in companies that you see support governments that uh, have horrible human rights violations. I mean, these things are harder to do. It's harder to live as a revolutionary than it is to simply put on that cliche mask of dying for revolution. So in that sense, the martyr challenged the very stereotype of what a martyr was. Because I'm supposed to be dead. And as you hear, at the end, he takes a breath. Because Cornell West says, yo, yo, brother, it's not your time to die. The amount of pressure that exists and the responsibility that you take on. Because I think that, I said it just before, when you rhyme about being a criminal, and, and if you come from America, you come here, they got ghettos in London too. They want to know how tough you are, and to them it's a status symbol to come G-check you. If you rhyme about being a pimp, then they think every woman that's around you is for sale. If you rhyme about being a revolutionary, then people crawl, they'll scratch their fucking fingernails off to find some tiny little piece of hypocrisy in you. You know why? Because revolution is sacred to them. Because they think, no, this ordinary man is not like the iconic revolutionary figures that I read about. Unfortunately, most of these people are too ignorant to realize the iconic revolutionary figures that they read about are some of the most flawed, fucked up people in history and usually bad parents because they dedicate their entire life to revolution and their kids at home saying, hey dad, I don't give a fuck if you freed Cuba. You never showed up for my birthday. You ain't never come around and I'm here growing up alone with my mother because you got yourself killed over some goddamn ideological crusade. There is a balance there. And I know that people love and respect revolution. So I'm not afraid of, uh, of encountering that. I'm not afraid of being challenged in that way. In fact, I relish that because it gives me the opportunity to grow.